Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, I decided to kind of switch things up. I'm going to be the doing the Herald set. Um, same shield, same weapon, but now I have semi-leveled up bow and tons of arrows, which... There we go. And I can still fast roll. So um, we just did the cath catacombs of Carthus, and we're going to now go down into a smoldering lake here and explore some stuff. Um, there's this ballista thing which is kind of annoying so I think I might want to clear this out once that's done but there is one item that we need the ballista to get oops stop running Yeah, that did it. Speckled stone plate. <laughs> oh, great. This is quite loud for me. I don't know how loud it is for you. Alright, so the speckled stone plate ring is the one we get from uh, Sigmire in the first game. I didn't do that because I didn't kill him, but um, he apparently gives it to you if you do something right in the Isolith, but which probably makes sense why it's here. Stone plates are symbols of true knights, and speckled stone plates are granted to those who face an endless journey, slightly increasing magic, lightning fire, and dark damage absorption. I'm wearing this, the... Here, I might as well put this one on as well. Um... So yeah, I, I guess I haven't mentioned it, and probably because there's just so much commotion. Um, ugh. <laughs> really? Okay. Alright, fun times, okay. But yeah, so this place I think is meant to be like Isolith. I'm gonna crab this bonfire here. And we'll see more evidence for that later. Oh, great. Oh, interesting.
This is so chaotic. And I'm just sitting here. And I already feel like... <laughs> like it's so manic. I don't remember it being this out of control. Where are we at with the uh, health? There we go. So we get a lightning strike, an undead bone shard. By the way, I fixed my controller, so now this is like perfect now. Alright. A Lost Dragon Slaying Miracle. Uh, let me get in here. We'll either be quieter or that thing will stop shooting. Are we, oh my god. Okay. Whew. A Lost Dragon Slaying Miracle. This tale describes the lost practices of ancient dragon slayers who found that in order to pierce dragon scale, lightning should not be hurled as a bolt, but rather be thrust as a stake directly into the dragon's hide to be truly effective. If I recall the opening cinematic for Dark Souls 1, it does show Gwyn and a bunch of people throwing bolts as spears and that flaying off the, the uh, stone. But, okay, fair enough. Maybe they found a better way to do it. And we got an under bone shard. Okay. So now, let's explore Isolith. I mean, Smoldering Lake. Oh, no poise break. very Corvian like but there's some sort of pyromancer that can raise up these balls of fire like that and they'll shoot out um, yeah so we can see dead uh, capper demons here anyway when you kill those guys then the balls of fire go away um, that they created there are more pyromancers down there. This area in general is just very, very tough. Full of grooves, full of pyromancy. Whoa, that's going a long way. These guys are embered too, it looks like. I don't know if that's just the case with everyone here. But... Like everyone in the Smoldering Lake is at like, embered looking? Or... Gotta be a trap here. Huh. There it is. Ugh. I thought I got a hit off. He, like, gets more powerful when, uh, when he jumps on you. Oh, 
Oh my god. Okay. This looks like one of those pyromancers we just killed. And it has like mold growing off his back, which is kind of also another bloodborne y kind of tip of the head. I don't have my. Uh, I don't suppose I could throw this up. What? So these take no fire damage now. Ugh. So yeah, there's that guy. Um, we're not gonna jump and grab that. I don't remember like, you know, exactly everything to do and where to go. I do know that there's two entrances into this area, and I went, you know, the quote unquote obvious way, but there's a way you can fall in in the smoldering lake. Safe. Okay. I think there's still a second one. Yeah, we can see the Taurus demon statues here as well. And there's the fire sage, or they're just the asylum type demons. Um, looks like they've been immortalized with these, like they're being revered. Ugh. That did a lot of damage. Undead bone shard. I think we get a couple undead bone shards in this uh, area. That is two, not like a bunch. Couple in the truest sense. Oh, I thought he was holding a sword, but it looks like that's his tail behind him. does look like similar to the way that, um, you know, around Artorias you always see, like, his graves and his stuff, you always see, like, swords sticking out, like, in honor. Looks like the, uh, the uh, Capra demons were doing that. It's kind of interesting. Alright, 
So that's progress, I think. So we're going to try our best go in this direction. Did I really boost my item discovery or something? Like a Taurus demon. Like, maybe they aren't statues. I mean, maybe they're the same as these, but they've just been set up. But yeah, more Taurus demons. Stacked in a pile. Okay, I think this is just a normal grove. That's raising my item discovery. My item discovery is still 107. I just feel like everyone's dropping stuff today. Okay. Alright. So this is our first branching path. A little left first, I think. I feel like hidden wall is like I'm getting my hidden wall <laughs> spiny sense. Like I remember a hidden wall around here somewhere. There's a hidden wall in this room. Um, okay. And then this is where we get this Estus shard. We could drop down here, but that's just the room we're in. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'm going to attempt to do this. I only have two flasks. I remember there's an enemy in here that's hard.
time. Maybe it's just because you don't expect ambushes and stuff, because I know there's a couple of these guys here. in this room praying to well, one of these pyromancers we have the Isolith pyromancy tome a pyromancy tome from Isolith containing pyromancies of the witches um, chaos pyromancies manipulate lava and birth all later forms of pyromancy there's another indication that chaos existed before pyromancy which we've kind of talked about um, in some fashion since Dark Souls 1. And it's always up for debate, like what happened when and all this stuff, so. Chaos gem. Okay. Nice. Relics of lands scorched by the chaos flame. Chaos weapons inflict fire damage and scale with intelligence and faith. So yeah, um, Cornix told us that there was Isolith converging. You know that Isolith would be near because of the lands converging. And that he knew of a Isolith tome. Oops. Um. I feel like I can't do this next part with only one Estus flask, but but let's go this way at least. Oops, I went the wrong way. Can you jump over this? Or do you just go around it? Let's go this way first. Let's see if there's just a way around it or something. Looks like the Fair Maiden, or perhaps, possibly, Quaylag. We get the Quailana Pyromancy Tome. Pyromancy Tome of Quailana containing her unique spells. These pyromancies can only be taught by a female master. Aha! So we actually can't give this to Cornix. Quailana, the sole surviving witch of Isolith, once accepted a human pupil, but after the pupil moved on, she never took another. That might have been us. Alright, so... I don't know, maybe we'll do this as some sort of a... 
um, loose ends video, but you know, I don't think I'm prepared to uh, with health and uh, flame resist to go across the lava. You literally just have to tank it. So, all right. So, does this just go around? Yes, okay, good. But that's how you get that other item. More large titanite. You can always use that. And there is an item here. Isolus staff. Ancient catalyst of the witch of Isolith and her daughters used long before. I didn't realize how much I hated basilisks in this game. I don't feel like I ever had a big trouble with them. Like, I think I've gotten cursed more in this playthrough than I ever have in every playthrough of Dark Souls 3. Um, maybe I just grew up scared of them from the first game. I guess we could read the uh, Isolith. Isolith staff now. Ancient catalyst, catalyst of the Witch of Isolith and her daughters used long before the dawn of chaos and, py and pyromancy. With the birth of the chaos flame, so th that's interesting too. So. They used the cattle, the staff for something before there was even chaos or pyromancy. And that's something we have heard about, like the quote unquote fire arts. So maybe that's what that's referring to. With the birth of the, and why, and like, I don't understand why as a writer, like Miyazaki went to this length of saying like, well, there was fire arts and then there was chaos and then there was pyromancies and there's br different branches of pyromancy. Like it just seems n unnecessarily complicated as to like convolute when you're talking about in the timeline. It's all just fire arts, you know what I mean? But anyway, whatever. <laughs> With the birth of the chaos flame, the flame witches were at once both sorcerers and shamans. Uh, Faith adjusts the power of sorceries cast using this catalyst, and the staff also seems to boost power of dark sorceries. Um, so maybe it was used for sorceries, um, not fire arts. But it does say which of Isolith and her daughters used long before the chaos, but they're called the daughters of chaos, as if they were born of chaos or whatever. So I don't know if that's just inconsistent or what, but... Oh my god.
Is this it? Just the one guy left. So maybe you can see with these guys better than in one. So, I mean, you can see, but it's hard without me being able to point. So, it's they have this little beak there, like the white teeth. And then right above, on the far right corner, there's a little dot, and that's his eyes. They have two of those. And then, these things are like decoys, meant to scare you know, enemies or whatever. It's kind of an interesting point about basilisks. Okay. Huh. Titanite scale is sitting here. Maybe these are what the basilisk homes look like, like the way they birth basilisks, because it kind of looks like their eyes. Uh, now I gotta find, fight Knight Zork again, and this might, I'm not going to Ember until we beat him, just because he's tough, and he can probably kill me in one hit at this juncture. Oh my god, don't go in the lava. Is the other run-up better than this? I can't remember. No, because there's those to get to. Uh. To get to that door, you have to pass a bunch of crews. So I think it's better to just do it this way. Fortunately, you can just like run right through this these basilisks for future or whatever. I just you know playing through a game like this, I want to like kill everything once at least. I'm doing too bad on Zorg either. Just you know the one shot kills really kill it. It's interesting that he can cancel that. Yeah. If he could keep doing that, that would be great.
All right. And I'm really excited to get his stuff, because now that we've been making this connection between Wolnir and Old Iron King from the Black Blade and from the Fire Snake and all this stuff, getting, like, the few Multi Great Sword, although he also has the Black Iron Great Shield, which is from the Knights of um, Berneki, uh, Black Iron Tarkus is from. Which isn't really a connection. This is also something that we'll get later. Um, yeah. Might be able to like jump down and grab it and die. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to be creative about how we do that. Okay, so now this is another section that I find <laughs> I don't like um, coming up to, or that I find difficult. Because it has all those weird skeleton guys that throw kukuri. Um, okay, this twisted sword, because it was created by a soul, a twisted soul, I guess. The heaviest of all Alter Great Swords resembles Black Slate. This weapon, said to belong to a trader from long ago, was so heavy that it found no owner and became a forgotten relic in history. And it uses stomp. Traders, of course, referring to Raim, who was allied with... Velstat with Vendrick, they were brothers, and then um, he, I guess, betrayed them, um, but I know that he left and then ended up at, uh, with the Old Iron King, and, uh, well, not with the Old Iron King, he found Broom after the Old Iron King had left, but when Nadalia was there, and Nadalia kind of bound herself to uh, his weapon. Great shield made of black iron, deeply feared for its association with Night Slayer Zorig. Black iron offers high defense and is particularly effective against warding off fire. And yes, he did shield bash us a couple times with it. At least in the previous fight. Alright. Now there is a, a black night here um, all right I think that should do it Really? You don't drop anything? Hmm. Crestfallen Knight. And then um, there's a there's an item up here. So we have to drop down tool, which is I hate backtracking. Um, but it's the Dragon Slayer Great Bow or whatever. Interesting, your stamina doesn't go down when you climb fast. You don't climb as fast as a uh, two, but you definitely climb a little faster. Oh, okay, so you can drop down to here. So you don't have to make that hole fall. Okay, it makes sense now. But... Alright. Dragon Rider Bow. Oops, it's not even the Dragon Slayer, it's Dragon Rider from Vendrick's time. Long bow of dragon riders who served the old king of want. Right. Uh, the dragon riders were the old king's royal guard, and great strength was demanded of them. Merely drawing this bow calls for inhuman strength. The worthy few who can master this bow, however, use it to devastating effect. Puncture. Okay. Let's hope I can do this in one pass. It'd be very helpful. Bone. 
40 minutes, so I think this is going to be, I mean, if I can do this in one try, this will be a good, well, we still have to beat the boss and everything. They're still pretty bad. I didn't even get to the hard part. <laughs> I'll see if I can kite those guys out. The good part about this is that I do believe that we can um, really how did I get hit by two things falling down there? Don't get hit by the rat this time. Juke. I guess there's also all these like branches growing down here, like the chaos, bed of chaos, probably. probably RNG. He probably can do like a stab that wouldn't reach you. Alright. Let's try to kite these bone wheels out one at a time. Is there something around here? <laughs> Alright. I guess I could use my bow too to kite one. Do this really methodically. Okay. Probably get my souls before. Oh, I hate the walls. Okay. Because the problem with doing this methodically is that like you spend all this time making sure you're clearing things out and then you die in one area and then you're like okay well got to do that all again an enemy up on the, there's two enemies up on the right that I do not want coming down here.
They just don't care. Oh my god. Please let this be the only time I have to fight these guys. <laughs> and there is the uh, arbalist, or what do you call this? I can't remember. Yay! Yellow bug pellet. I got that once and I didn't think I read it. <laughs> Crushed insects, temporary boost lightning absorption. The worm tumbled into the catacombs and proceeded to dominate its new home in Smoldering Lake. Yeah, we read the blue ones, we read those. Yeah, I think we just didn't read the yellow ones. I want to say basilisk and then I want to say arbalist. I don't remember what this is called. But it's turned off. Not sure how that turns it off. But it does. So now we can go. You know, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a I'm going to make it a second episode, and then maybe we can do some loose ends in the next one, because I'm not going to be able to get it this done. So, um, thanks for watching uh, Smoldering Lake. We'll continue with the rest of it next time, and uh, have a good one. Bye.